Hey everybody, we are teaching Gravity Sketch, and this time we're going to be looking at the Volumetric Tool, the Volume Tool. This is a tool for very quickly and easily building up a solid shape out of various pieces. There we go. And as you can see, it makes a shape in full three dimensions. Now, this volumetric, we've got two ways of drawing. Our standard freehand, as well as point to point. Now, point to point, each time you pull your trigger, it sets the next point in this shape. Offhand, clicking its trigger tells it you're done. And we now have this volumetric shape drawn. Now, whether you draw it with point to point or in one stroke, here's how it's going to work. The volumetric shape, I'm going to pull this off so we can keep looking at it. When I draw it, I'm going to draw a spiral going down. Oops, let's, uh, let's get out of that and go into normal mode so I can draw a spiral going down. So it's got this cylinder shape. If I go to edit this shape, it's not going to be a standard subdivision. When I edit this shape, you can see that spiral that I drew in the control points. So we have my definite starting point up here and a definite ending point down here. And all of my line in the middle is still these spiral shape. That's what's controlling the outside edge. If I reduce the number of control points, in this case, it's still going to be a pretty good cylinder. Even those few control points are enough to give it the diagram, that spiral shape. So if I move my hand in a different pattern instead of just a spiral, but go in crazy zigzags up and down, yes, it is remembering that whole pattern. See all those control points? They are following the motion of my hand. So if I'm going to go in and edit this, that type of random motion could be a little harder to control than an outer edge spiral type of motion. Now, it is possible after the fact to convert it into a normal subdivided. Now we can move planes, we can move edges, we can move control points. It's no longer our original volume shape, but it's now a standard subdivide shape. And that's not something I can undo. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to undo completely and go back to my normal. You'll notice it won't let me. Once you go subdivided, you're committed. So rather than that, I'm going to get a fresh volumetric shape, give it a nice regular spiral. So if I do need to edit it, I can see that spiral. I can see my control points in a nice, obvious, easy to control fashion. Now, there are a number of different ways to work with this than just looking for those edge points, looking for those control points. So if I start a fresh one from scratch, we've got our single point to point or our draw. These shapes, normal round shape, you'll notice I'm starting with a sphere. So its edges are going to have that nice rounded contour. If I choose the square, now you can see my actual drawing hand is more of a square. Whoops. There it is. So when I draw that shape, you can see it tries to keep the corners a little sharper. Whereas the rounded edge, it won't has only curves. You can see I've got a point here because I've got a square as my main control brush. If I go for the diamond, now you can see how my, my brush is pointy on either end. So if I make my line in that direction, I can keep that point on the corners. So the shape you do, many people stick with a circle because they just want those nice, round, smooth edges on all sides. I've already got one, so I'll keep that one. Other modifications we can choose when we're drawing it. Low poly. 
Just like with our other tools, if I activate low poly, then when I draw this shape, you can actually see the edges. You can actually see the polygons. Instead of being perfectly round and smooth, it's got planes and facets. That is also going to take a lot less memory, a lot less horsepower on a, on a lower power computer or on a standalone device like a Quest. Planar. Planar, instead of letting you draw these full three-dimensional objects, planar actually brings up a flat surface. So when I draw, I'm actually stuck to that flat surface. So it makes these flat palette types of shapes. If I complete the circle or not, even if I don't complete that circle, it still gives me the complete shape. If I loop back into myself, it'll create hollows and openings. So watch this. I'm going to draw outer circle, and then I'm going to loop back into the inner circle. And you can see how it creates openings within the shape. Once you've got one of these planar shapes created, if you go to edit this, you're only going to be able to edit the outer shape but you're also going to get a green arrow for thickness. So here's my shape. Edit. So the control points are only for these outer bits. You can see I can control the way these loops go through each other. But I've also got this green arrow. That green arrow controls the thickness. Now I've got a much thicker shape to work with. It's still defined by the planar shape, but now I can edit it, whoops, to make it a thicker shape as well. So these objects, once you've created them, we can control their outer outline and also how deep, how thick do you want those shapes. Planar option when you're creating new volume objects. I'm going to turn planar off and get rid of that plane. Another feature is this auto scale. You'll notice by default, if I've got my brush this big and I make the world big, my brush is still this big. Make the world small, same size brush. World smaller, same size brush. World smaller, same. So the brush does not scale with the world. The brush always stays the same size in your hand. Now if I activate auto scale, now I'm small and give myself a small brush. If I get bigger, you can see how my brush gets appears to get smaller. It's actually staying the same size as the original, but now it's automatically scaling with the world. So if I go back to small again, you can see it's now a very big brush, relatively speaking, because it was all about scaling with the room. As the room gets smaller, the brush gets smaller. Automatic scale. There we go. Finally, with all of our uh, tricks under our, our bag here, we have polar symmetry. That's going to allow you to set up an axis and use the trigger on your offhand to move that axis. But now you can see I've got a mirror around that point. With only two, I'm actually drawing two pieces. The more I raise this polar symmetry, the more pieces are going to be drawn at a time. See that? Four. Bumping it up to eight. A little smaller. There. So you can see how that, and then this resets your axis. So things like propellers, hubs of tires, we can use this polar symmetry to very quickly get this type of object, fans and things. Now with polar symmetry, this is considered one object. It is the same piece. I don't need to group it.
However, if I'm going to edit it, it's only going to let me edit one piece. And then all of the polar symmetries will follow suit. So here is that one fan blade with control points. And as I control this one, you can see all of the fan blades are mimicking what that one does. It's now part of that object. So this object will always have those eight blades that are always perfectly mirrored. If I grab this object and edit, you can see I can turn it into a subdivided object still if I want. So if I did want to make each blade look different, now that it's in place, I can subdivide and then each blade is now fully manipulatable. So volumetric objects, at their most basic, it's just drawing a shape based on how you move your hand to give you a very quick, smooth, organic shape. There we go. Based on how you move your hand. But we can add a few more controls like polar symmetry to get much more exotic, much more complicated shapes, but still be able to draw them fairly quickly. Once we've got them in place, we can then edit them to make them exactly the way we want them, just like all of our other pieces we've got uh, in Gravity Sketch. So let's get those so we can see most of those pieces. Play around with these guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've got creative tools. Let me know if you create some interesting pieces and want to show them off. Likewise, if I forget something obvious, let us know so we can include it as either the comments below or in later episodes. I can't use the volumetric to write my message because it's just going to turn into one big piece. So let's go back to our normal tool here so I can write my subscription message. Thanks for watching. We do this all the time on youtube.com slash shameless mayhem. So let us know what you'd like to learn. Let us know what you think. Thanks for joining us.